Hey, I'm Kate. My story ain't like the ones you're used to. It's a bit rough around the edges, kinda like me, I guess. See, I was five when my dad decided he'd had enough. Just up and left one day. My mom, Clara, well, she didn't take it too well. Can't say I blame her, but I sure as hell got the short end of the stick. Kate, do your damn chores. Clara's voice would cut through the silence of our small, cluttered house like a knife. She had this way of making me feel like I was nothing but a burden. I'm doing them, mom. I'd shoot back, trying to keep my voice steady. I learned early on that talking back only made things worse, but sometimes I couldn't help myself. She'd just scoff, muttering something about me being just as useless as my dad. That stung. I didn't even remember him that well, but according to Clara, I was a spitting image, a constant, living reminder of the man who left us. Most days, she'd be out, trying to scrape together a life for us, or that's what she claimed. I spent a lot of nights alone, or worse, with her friends who barely tolerated my presence. Keep an eye on Kate, she'd say, as if I was some pet she couldn't be bothered to care for. The few times she was home, affection was in short supply. A head pat here, a distracted uh huh there as I tried to tell her about my day. It was like talking to a wall. One evening, I tried to hug her. I just wanted to feel like her daughter, you know? She stiffened up and pushed me away. What do you want now? She snapped, eyeing me like I'd asked for the moon. Nothing, I mumbled, stepping back. I learned to stop asking for hugs after that. School wasn't much better. I was the quiet kid, the one with the hand-me-down clothes, and the absent mom at every parent-teacher meeting. Why's your mom never here, Kate? The other kids would ask. What was I supposed to say? That she didn't care? One day, Clara came home in a foul mood, worse than usual. She'd had a fight with one of her friends, the kind that was supposed to watch me, but just let me fend for myself. Why can't you be more like other kids, Kate? Look at you, sitting there with your stupid books. You're just like your father, a complete waste of space. I bit my lip, holding back tears. Arguing would only make it worse. Sorry, mom, was all I could say, even though I didn't understand what I was apologizing for. That night, I lay in bed, listening to the silence of the house. It was overwhelming, the feeling of being so unloved, so unwanted. I promised myself that one day, things would be different. I wouldn't end up bitter and alone like Clara. I didn't know how I'd make it happen, but I had to believe there was more to life than this. Then Mark came along. Mom married him in a whirlwind, and suddenly, we were a family again. But when Lily was born, it was as if I became invisible, a ghost wandering the halls of a house that no longer felt like home. Kate, look at your sister. Why can't you be more like her? Mom would often say, her gaze fixed on Lily with a warmth I hadn't seen in years. I tried to remember the last time she'd looked at me like that, but came up empty. I shrugged, attempting to ignore the sting of her words. What do you mean, Mom? She sighed, a sound of frustration and disappointment. Lily so put together, so, delicate. And you? You're always in those baggy clothes, hiding who knows what. You could be pretty if you tried. Mark would sometimes interject, a gentle mediator in our stormy household. Clara, Kate's fine the way she is. She's smart, kind. But mom would cut him off, her voice cold. I'm talking to my daughter, Mark. Stay out of this. The divide between Lily and me grew as she embraced her role as the cherished child. She knew she was the favorite and used it to her advantage, sabotaging me with a smile on her face. Mom, Kate won't share her makeup with me. Lily would lie, knowing full well I had barely enough for myself. I bought that for both of you, mom would snap at me, without bothering to check the truth. Why do you always have to be so selfish? But I, I'd start, only to be silenced by a look. Mark, bless his heart, tried to make peace, but his efforts were often in vain. One evening, as I helped Lily with her homework, she deliberately knocked her glass of juice over my papers. Oops, 
she said, not a hint of remorse in her voice. Lily, apologize to your sister, Mark said firmly, witnessing the scene. Lily pouted, turning her manipulation skills on. I didn't mean to, Daddy. I'm sorry, Kate. She lied, her apology as empty as her gaze. Mom walked in at the tail end, her eyes darting between us. Without missing a beat, she sided with Lily. Kate, can't you see she's sorry? Stop making a scene and clean this up. Frustration boiling within me, I cleaned up the mess, the injustice of it all burning in my chest. It was always the same, Lily's word against mine, and I was always the villain in mom's eyes. One day, feeling a mix of desperation and longing for a connection, I called Mark dad in a moment of vulnerability. It slipped out, natural as breathing, but the fallout was immediate and harsh. Mom's face twisted into a mask of fury. How dare you? You have a father, Kate, and Mark is not him. You're just trying to replace him because he didn't want you. Her words were like a physical blow, knocking the air from my lungs. Mark looked stricken, caught between his wife and stepdaughter, a silent witness, to my humiliation. I just... My voice broke, the hurt too deep for tears. I thought... What? That you could just pretend everything's okay? That you could make us a perfect little family? Mom's voice was venomous, each word a pointed dagger aimed straight at my heart. In the end, I retreated to my room, the sound of Lily's laughter echoing behind me. I was the outsider, the unwanted, living in a house, divided by favoritism and silent battles. Mark tried to offer solace, but his kindness was a bomb on a wound too deep to heal. Growing up wasn't easy, not by a long shot. As I hit my teen years, things at home went from bad to downright miserable. Mom's critiques got harsher, and Lily, well, she was blossoming into a mini-tyrant, with Mom as her biggest cheerleader. One afternoon, I was trying on clothes in my room, the door barely cracked open. I could hear Lily snickers from the hallway. Look at Kate, trying to dress up. Like putting lipstick on a pig, she jeered, not even bothering to lower her voice. I flinched, the sting of her words hitting harder than I wanted to admit. Shut up, Lily. I snapped back, more hurt than angry. Mom's voice cut through the tension like a hot knife. Kate, don't talk to your sister like that. And Lily's right, you know. Those clothes do nothing for you. I stood there, a mix of anger and humiliation washing over me. I wanted to scream, to tell them both off, but I knew it would only make things worse. Mark wandered in, oblivious to the brewing storm. What's all the noise about? He asked, looking between us. Lily's just being her usual charming self, I muttered, my voice dripping with sarcasm. Mark sighed, a look of resignation on his face. Girls, can't we all just get along for once? Tell her to stop picking on me, then, Lily whined, playing the victim like she always did. I'm not the one starting things, I protested, but it fell on deaf ears. Mark just shook his head and walked away, leaving me to fend for myself yet again. The next day at school, I overheard some kids talking about a party. For a fleeting moment, I entertained the idea of going, of being normal, for a change. But then reality crashed back in. I couldn't bring anyone home. Mom would make sure any friend or boy I liked would run for the hills with her comments. One evening, Mom was on one of her tirades about my appearance. You could be pretty if you actually tried, Kate. Look at Lily, she takes care of herself. I was at my breaking point. Why do you always compare me to her? I'm not Lily. Mom just rolled her eyes. Because she sets a good example. You could learn a lot from your sister. The words felt like a slap in the face. It was always Lily, always about how perfect she was and how I just couldn't measure up. I stormed off, my heart pounding in my chest. Alone in my room, I let the tears come. It was clear I was the odd one out in this family, the constant disappointment. And no matter how hard I tried, it felt like it would never be enough. Finding love should have been exciting, right? 
For most people, maybe, but for me, it felt like walking through a minefield blindfolded. After everything at home, I was hungry for a bit of tenderness, something real and warm. But every time I thought I found it, boom, everything blew up in my face. I met Jake at work. He was funny, had a killer smile, and didn't seem to mind my awkwardness. We hit it off, and for a minute there, I thought, hey, maybe this could be it. One night, I decided to bring him home, thinking it'd be safe. Big mistake. Kate, who's this? Mom asked, eyeing Jake like he was some bug she found under the sink. This is Jake, Mom. We work together, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. Jake reached out, all polite and smiling. Nice to meet you, ma'am. Mom just nodded, her smile tight. Once we sat down, it started. It was like she had a radar for my vulnerabilities. So, Jake, Kate's not much of a looker, but she's got a good heart, I suppose. Keeps her room clean. That's something, right? Mom's voice was all sweet poison, her words slathered in fake honey. I could feel my cheeks burning, my heart sinking. Jake looked at me, confusion and pity in his eyes. That look, it just about killed me. Actually, I think Kate's great. Really smart and funny, Jake said, trying to defend me, but mom wasn't having it. Oh, sure, sure. But you know, boys, always gotta be careful. Girls like Kate, they get clingy, think every date means wedding bells. Mom went on, each word a dagger. The evening couldn't end fast enough. Jake left, and so did any hope of us. He was cool at work, but distant. Couldn't blame him. Who'd want to dive into that hot mess? It wasn't just Jake. There was Tom, Darren, and a few others. Different faces, same story. Mom would either scare them off with her warnings, or Lily would do her part, spilling some made-up scandal about me. I stopped bringing guys home after that. Started meeting them outside, but the damage was done. My confidence was shot. Every date felt like a ticking time bomb, waiting for the moment they'd find out about my crazy family and bail. One night, after another failed date, I came home to find Mark sitting in the living room, alone. Rough night? He asked, the TV casting shadows on his tired face. Yeah, you could say that. I replied, slumping down beside him. Kate, you're a catch, you know that? Any guy would be lucky to have you, Mark said, sincere as always. I wanted to believe him, really, I did. But belief was a luxury I couldn't afford. Not with mom and Lily always there, ready to remind me I wasn't enough. Thanks, Mark. Just gotta keep looking, right? I forced a smile, but inside, I was crumbling. Yeah, keep looking. He's out there, Kate. Someone who'll see you for the amazing person you are. Mark encouraged, his optimism a faint light in the darkness. I nodded, not really convinced, but grateful for Mark's belief in me. Maybe one day, I'd find someone who looked past the mess, saw me, and stayed. Until then, I'd keep searching, hoping for a love that could withstand the chaos of my life. A few years down the road, and here I am, Kate, at 27, carving out a slice of life for myself. I've got a decent job as an economist at this big company, and I've been living in my little slice of independence, a small apartment that's all mine. But the real game changer? Meeting Alex. He's not just some guy, he's the guy. The one I can actually picture the whole, till death do us part, scenario with. One evening, lounging on my thrift store couch, Alex turned to me, his eyes serious, but kind. Kate, I think it's time we introduce each other to our folks. I mean, if we're serious about this, and I know I am, they should know, right? My stomach did a somersault. Meeting his folks? Sure. My family? That's a whole different ball game. Alex, you know I'm all in with you, but my family, it's complicated. He took my hand, his thumb brushing against mine. Hey, we all have our brand of crazy at home. How bad can it be? I sighed, spilling the beans about the whole ordeal with mom and Lily, leaving out no gritty detail. 
surprisingly, he didn't bolt. Instead, he squeezed my hand tighter. We'll face them together, he said, and just like that, I felt a bit braver. So, I bit the bullet and called Mark. Out of everyone, he's been a steady rock in the shifting sands of my family drama. Mark, I've got news. I'm seeing someone, Alex, and we're, engaged. There was a pause, and then, Kate, that's fantastic. When do we get to meet him? Mark's enthusiasm was like a warm blanket. He didn't skip a beat, jumping straight to when, not if. I let out a breath I didn't know I was holding. Soon, Mark. I just, I'm a bit on edge about mom and Lily. Don't you worry. I'll smooth things over on this end. Just bring that young man over. It's about time there was some good news around here. Hanging up, I turned to Alex, who'd been watching me with a mix of curiosity and concern. Well, Mark's on board. Looks like we're doing this. He grinned, pulling me into a hug. See? Step one, down. We'll handle the rest just fine. But as the day approached, I couldn't shake off the nerves. Meeting Alex's folks went better than I could have hoped. They were warm, welcoming, everything you'd want in potential in-laws. It gave me a sliver of hope, maybe too much. Now, as I paced the length of my living room, I tried to muster that same hope for the upcoming dinner at my family's house. Alex, ever the optimist, assured me it'd be alright, but deep down, I knew the storm that was brewing. It was going to be a showdown, my past against my future. But with Alex by my side, I felt a tad more courageous. Still, I couldn't help but run through every possible scenario, each ending more dramatic than the last. Kate, it'll be okay. Alex said, catching me mid-pace and pulling me into his arms. Whatever happens, we're in it together. The air was thick as Alex and I approached my mom's house, both of us bracing for what was coming. Little did we know, the evening had a twist in store. Kate, Alex, finally. Mom greeted us at the door, her usual frostiness replaced by a warmth that felt out of place. As soon as we were settled and introductions were out of the way, the bomb dropped. So, Alex, Kate tells me you're quite the big shot, director of your company and all. Mom said, her eyes lighting up in a way I hadn't seen in years. Alex, ever humble, just nodded. Well, I wouldn't say big shot, but yeah, I've worked my way up. That's all it took. Suddenly, Mom was all smiles and praises, hanging on Alex's every word. The transformation was almost comical if it wasn't so painfully obvious. Dinner was served, and the atmosphere had done a complete 180. Mom was laying it on thick, every other sentence aimed at showcasing how wonderful our family was, especially Lily. Lily's just been accepted into the honors program at school, Mom boasted, shooting a look at Alex as if to say, See, we're a family of achievers. Lily ate up the attention, adding her own embellishments. Yeah, I've always been top of my class. I guess it runs in the family. I couldn't help but roll my eyes. Alex gave my hand a squeeze under the table, a silent show of solidarity. Mark, bless him, tried to keep things balanced, mentioning some of my achievements, but mom steamrolled over him, redirecting the conversation back to Lily and, whenever possible, Alex's impressive career. As the night wore on, mom's tactics became even more transparent. She was laying the groundwork, trying to cement a bond with Alex, presumably to ensure her place in what she saw as our newfound fortune. Alex, you must come from a very driven family. It's so important, don't you think, to instill those values in our children? Mom said, her gaze flitting between Alex and Lily. Alex, to his credit, handled it with grace. Absolutely. Hard work and integrity go a long way, he replied, deliberately including me in the conversation with a look. As we made our excuses to leave, Mom was all but hanging off Alex, insisting we visit more often. You must come for dinner again soon, Alex. It's been such a pleasure, she gushed, practically ignoring me as we said our goodbyes. Once in the car, Alex let out a low whistle. Wow, that was something else. 
your mom really knows how to lay it on thick. I sighed, leaning back in my seat. Yeah, sorry about that. She's, well, she sees what she wants to see. Alex took my hand, giving it a reassuring squeeze. Hey, we're in this together, remember? No amount of schmoozing from your mom can change that. The day after the dinner, I was still reeling from mom's performance when my phone buzzed. It was Alex, and he sounded weird, like he was trying to stay calm, but was struggling. Kate, you're not gonna believe this. Your mom, she called me. Alex started, his voice tight. I froze. Called you? How did she even get your number? He sighed. Found it on some work documents you left at their place, I guess. But listen, what she said, it's insane. My heart sank. What did she say, Alex? She asked me to leave you. To marry Lily instead. He blurted out, and I could almost hear his disbelief through the phone. I felt like I'd been punched in the gut. She what? The words felt surreal, like we were talking about someone else's life, not ours. Yeah, I know. It's messed up. But Kate, I have an idea. We can expose her, show everyone what she's really like," Alex said, a determined edge to his voice. Fast forward, and I'm sitting in a cafe, wig and sunglasses on, heart pounding as I watch Alex and my mom at a nearby table. The conversation flows, with my mom laying out her absurd proposal like she's negotiating a business deal, unaware of the dictaphone hidden in Alex's jacket. As the meeting wraps up, my mom leaves the cafe, all smiles and confidence. I watch her go, shaking my head. This was a woman I no longer recognized, a stranger wearing my mother's face. Alex joined me, his face a mix of concern and anger. You okay, Kate? I looked up at him, my decision clear. Yeah, I'm okay. Let's go home. We have a wedding to plan. The day had come for truths to be laid bare, for masks to fall off, revealing the raw reality underneath. I walked into my parents' house, not as the Kate they thought they could manipulate, but as someone who had seen through their deceit. As I stepped in, my mom greeted me with a smug smile, one that made my stomach churn. Well, look who decided to show up. Too bad Alex won't be joining us anymore, right? He's chosen Lily over you. She gloated, her voice dripping with false pity. Mark, standing beside her, looked confused, his eyes shifting between Mom, Lily, and me. What's going on here? He asked, his voice heavy with concern. I didn't respond immediately. Instead, I locked eyes with Alex, who had followed me in. We shared a silent nod, a mutual agreement that it was time to end this charade. Actually, Mom, Alex is here, I said, stepping aside to reveal him. Mom's face faltered, her confidence slipping for a moment, before she masked it with indifference. The room was heavy with anticipation as Alex hit play on the recorder. My heart was racing, knowing the weight of what was about to be heard. As my mother's voice filled the room, you could feel the atmosphere shift. I never loved Kate. Her voice echoed, each word a dagger. And Mark, I married him for his money, nothing more. The recording stopped but its impact lingered, heavy, and suffocating. The silence that followed was broken only by the sound of my stepfather's voice, strained and full of hurt. I, I can't believe this, Mark finally spoke, his voice barely above a whisper, but carrying a storm of emotions. His gaze shifted from the recorder to my mother, seeking some denial, some sign of remorse. But there was none. Mark stood up, his decision clear in his hardened gaze. That's it. I'm done. I want a divorce," he declared, his voice stronger now, resolved. You need to leave the house. The fallout was immediate. Accusations flew, tears were shed, and the fabric of our family was irreparably torn. My mother and Lily, united in their scheme, were now facing the consequences of their actions, isolated by their own greed and deceit. As for me, standing there amidst the chaos, I felt a strange sense of peace. The truth, as painful as it was, had set me free from the web of lies that had ensnared our lives for too long.
In the weeks that followed, I focused on rebuilding, on planning a future with Alex, one based on trust and love. We got married in a small, intimate ceremony, surrounded by friends and those who truly cared for us. Mark was there, his presence a symbol of the family ties that still held, despite everything. Mom and Lily? I made the difficult decision to cut ties. It wasn't easy, but it was necessary for my peace of mind, for my happiness. As Alex and I stood together, hand in hand, I realized that this was just the beginning. A new chapter, free from the shadows of the past, ready to face whatever came our way, together.